If you want to see an animal that's not afraid of fire, look at these guys. Dude, this guy, dude, you got all kinds of stuff on. Here's our big problem, and that's what we're burning right now. This pasture needs lots of love. Needs some time of recovery. We're gonna plant a cover crop. We're gonna do some brush hogging. We may do some burning. One of my favorite things. We're gonna plant a cover crop and get this bad boy some love and rest because we're doing all this kind of in a rush. And luckily, my wife is very patient with me. Uh, the rain is coming, and that's where I'm gonna try to do all that now. Those are the goals today. find Eleanor real quick. Saved her some cubes. Hey Eleanor. Hey, come here girl. Come here. Got you some cubes there, honey. Good to see you girl. Eleanor, I tell you what, you get some of the best treatment of any bison out there. Girl, you know it. Oh. Well, hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Thank you guys for watching us. This is the Big Joe Herd hanging out right here behind me. I hide behind the wind a little bit. Woo! I'm gonna sit down. All right, so we've got a pasture that needs some TLC, some major TLC. That's my focus today. That's what we're doing. It needs some love. It needs some uh, restoration. Maybe let's say that. So I'm currently in pasture one which if you've been following us and you know what we just recently did, we just worked our bison. We worked roughly about 50 animals or so. Well, this is where the Big Joe herd had been stationed for a week or so before we actually worked them. So they've been hanging out in here. Well, this pasture is what we call our sacrifice pasture. And what that means is like what we did, we brought the Big Joe herd up and they hung out here for a while. So this pasture sees a lot of attention because it's right here next to the barn. What happens is it can take some abuse over time, a lot of stomping, but a lot of good things too. A lot of uh, urination and a lot of fertilizer, poop, right? Um, and then we also spread hay out here. So it gets a lot of good things, but it also takes some wear and tear basically, just like a used good old tire or anything like that. And so, what we're gonna do is one, I'm gonna run the brush hog right here. And uh, some of you say, well, Dusty, how are you gonna do all this? You don't have a tractor. Yo, well, you're right. But I've got a really nice brother-in-law, Daniel from Arms Family Homestead that lets me borrow some of his awesome stuff. Here, I think this is his about a 50 horsepower TYM tractor. And then also borrowing his TS10 brush hog from Rhino. It's a big bifold brush hog and we're going to knock it out the bison are going to love it that's what we're doing today so one we're going to clean it up by brush hogging two we may do some burning one of my favorite things to do of course three we may get the american harrow out and harrow all this poop because there is a lots of fertilizer out here guys and we can break it up and then four how we're going to restore this pasture is we're going to plant a cover crop and we're getting a little late on the cover crop, then it's gonna get a lot of rest because these animals, the Big Joe herd is going out. I think we have 34 in this group and uh, they're gonna head out and go to pasture three, which is a 40 acre pasture. Hey Jackie, hey girl, let's get to work.
got done brush hogging. Gonna do some burning, but let's get them distracted first. This guy, dude, you got all kinds of stuff on you. Here's our big problem, and that's what we're burning right now. See, look, it's all stuck on Big Joe. That's blackberry bushes, guys. Let's give them some cubes first. Let's give them some cubes first. They're all up here. sack to do some burning and let you guys be. Got plenty of cubes for me. I like to go ahead and spray around the edges sometimes with my water sprayer just because there is some dead vegetation. There is some dead grass going around some of these blackberry bush edges. So I'm just going to go ahead and knock it out with the water and kill the perimeter of these burns and that way I don't have to worry about it so we can go burn some more. See how fast that goes up? It sure don't take long. Doing things a little bit different today. Maya, what do you think? Not happy? I'm crazy, maybe. If you wanna see an animal that's not afraid of fire, look at these guys. It is strange, every time I start burning, they show up. Matter of fact, they're running. 
calves are. They're excited. Yeah, these animals are not afraid of fire. What we're doing here is uh, doing, oh my gosh, she just literally walked right through the black. That is crazy. She just walked right through the black. Like there was just, there was a super hot fire right there. And she just walked right through it. Burning some blackberry bushes here. Lots of blackberries you can see here. Just did that. There's a bunch of stubble left burning. The pasture is not on fire, I promise. The pasture is not on fire. That is uh, what I sprayed this summer. All this stuff is dead from this summer. It's about to go. There's a lot of dry fuel in there. There's uh, some blue stem in there, but we sprayed it. It's all completely dead. Notice there's no leaves on these blackberries. There are some blackberries in this pasture that still do have leaves. So it's because we didn't spray them. We didn't get to it, but this is a big patch that we did spray. And so, and this is kind of the rubble of what it looks like of all the blackberry stems right now. And so you have a big pile of them right here. So that's kind of what's going on. It'll look like that here in just a second. It's about to go. Look at those bison, they are not afraid. They're like walking right next to it. This will take about a couple minutes and it'll be gone. It gets pretty hot. I'm standing. Oh, there's a bunny rabbit. Oh, poor thing. It's all right, little guy. Oh yeah, look at those flames. It's like 20 feet high. Look at that path. Just <gasps> went straight through there. <laughs> Told you it'd take a couple minutes. It literally just blew right through there. That's how dead this stuff is. So there's kind of a relationship with fire and bison, of course. Well, in the springtime, you could, and I think a lot of the Native Americans did this on the with a lot of the Plains tribes, is you could burn some of your uh, dead fuel, some of your dead grasses. She's literally standing right in the black. That is remarkable. Doesn't even care. Literally, right out in the middle of it. So there's a relationship here because you could burn your pastures and then it'd turn green. <laughs> And then the bison would show up in the springtime when you're, uh, when the native prairies started to green up, uh, the bison would show up and the Native Americans were able to um, hunt them. But here in this situation, another relationship that I've seen here is um, wherever all these will burn. Look at the cows, they're excited, having fun. Is where we burn in a, probably the next day once the heat goes away, they'll be rolling in all this black. They'll be um, kind of laying in it and stuff. And I guess it's kind of like, uh, you know, therapeutic for them. It may be good for their skin, uh, keep the body lice off and um, all those bad things, I guess. It's a uh, charcoal cleansing, but um, they will roll in it very, very soon. And they're already walking through the black. Don't even care. Look at those calves. 
Ooh, don't get too close. They're still coming. Too curious. It's just a good sound, isn't it? Here's, a, here's an example of some that I didn't spray. You can tell they're burnt, not burning near as good. But here's some, here's some that I, I didn't spray. You see, I tried to light them, it's not as dead. There is some dead stuff here, but you can see the leaves still on these. I didn't get around to spray them, or I, I just didn't reach them very good. My fault, but you can definitely see the difference in the ones that are dead, how they burn versus these, but bison is still curious. Here are a couple of more large areas of blackberry bushes that we are gonna knock out today. These, however, I know for sure that we sprayed the heck out of and should be all dead vegetation. Here you can really tell a difference in how fast it goes up versus the some that still have some living growth on it. So here's what's left after I sprayed these blackberry bushes. It's just a whole bunch of these stems, like right here, look at those things, okay? That's what we're dealing with on these blackberries. They taste really good when they do bloom, but you can see that's what's left right here um, after. And then I come through and brush hogged it, I pushed a bunch of it up. And so that's what's burning in this big circle. You're like, Dusty, you got quite a fire going there, uh, dude. Well, you can kind of see the little white flakes right here or some of that ash. That is those stems. I mean, they're everywhere. I mean, there's tons of them right here. And, and those get stuck in the bison and people and everything, guys. Those are gnarly. I mean, there's, look at that pile of them. Um, need to be burnt. So I'm just kind of letting this burn. I'm controlling the front edge of it, but this was... When you go back and look at this, you're saying, well, this is a large area. Absolutely. <laughs> it is a large area. So what you're seeing was a massive area of blackberry bushes. And you can see all the uh, sticks sticking up. This was a massive area of blackberries. And see, you can see the color change from this to that. That's where an area was, and I brush hogged them, and I pushed them with the skid steer, and I piled them up. So there's some right here that are about to burn. And so this big circle that you see is basically where they were. Here, same thing. I didn't even spray. I did spray some of this because it was getting into the grass some. Not a lot of grass left, but you can see the majority of where the blackberry bushes is, and the legs of it and arms of it is right here. Um, some like I've got piled up over there. I'm not gonna light because it's too close to the power pole um, And these flames are getting pretty high. So when you see these big circles, that's what they are And I'll show some drone footage of the uh, post burn But uh, they're still burning and it's gonna burn a lot of this stuff. I might as well get rid of it It's dead and I'm gonna go ahead and call myself out here uh, I know that some of this stuff is gonna come back like some of it's green because I brush hogged it um, and I didn't kill it all when I sprayed it in the summer during the growing season is when you got to hammer these things. So because um, I wasn't able to spray them all, there's some you can see here that are still have some green left to them. More than likely what's going to happen is they're going to come back. Even after a burn, 
even after some spraying, if you don't get it good, they'll come back. But um, look at the huge area here of where they were. And so, guys, what this is, is grazing areas, um, which could be grazing areas, uh, potentially. So we're taking the time to really manicure this pasture and kind of restore it back to its native grasses. There is a lot of native grasses here. And what's helped these big blackberry uh, bushes burn is the dead fuel. There's a lot of dead fuel in here that the bison actually couldn't reach. And so because there's fuel under those blackberry bushes, they're easy to light. I mean, it didn't take me much to really light them. Um, and then once it gets up in that dead stuff, it takes off. So you got to have some fuel. And, and I don't mean diesel or gas. It's just the natural vegetation that occur along the sides of the blackberry bushes and underneath the blackberry bushes where the bison or any other critter can't graze and so it's actually fuel and helps us light these bushes but what a what a uh, huge area here and i'm just going to let it burn around the edges and then once it kind of gets out of the blackberry bushes i'll stop it and you can kind of see some winter grasses here the green it ain't going to burn past it so it's already going out over there. Well, to be honest with you guys, Maya and I got a little distracted and we may have burnt a little bit more than uh, intended to. Needless to say, I may be a slight pyro and I love to burn and I got a little carried away and that happens every now and then. Say hi to Dunbar and all the loud chickens. You walk outside and they start uh, cocooning. In case you guys been wondering how Dunbar is, he is getting big, he's getting fuzzy, gaining some weight, he's doing good. So, we need to go check the other bull, Big Joe. So right now, now that we've burnt, cover crop is coming up next. Um, and then we may break over, I'm changing things up a little bit. I talked about breaking up the poop first and then doing the cover crop, planting our seeds, but we may flip-flop that. We're gonna see how the cedar does. The cedar, it may break up uh, all the manure. So we may do that. Uh, we're gonna run the cedar, that's next. Uh, the first thing that we gotta do though, is we've gotta get the Big Joe herd, all of them. I think there's 34, 35 of them in there. We've gotta get them out of pasture one now so I can run the cover crop. So they're going to pasture three. Marissa and I are gonna do that next. You guys stay tuned for the next video. Thank you for watching.